Hey folks, your OS Reviews, you're watching our retro throwback look at the Sony Ericsson Xperia Play. This was dubbed as the PlayStation phone when it was released in the March of 2011, and even today, some fans are still hoping for a second generation model with faster components and a larger display. But of course, the Xperia Play is unique because of its uh, side out kind of keypad here for gaming with gaming controls kind of taken from perhaps a Sony PSP, and they are terrific controls. At first, I was quite dubious of the quality of these keys but they're extremely tactile and responsive so they are uh, indeed great controls when you are you know, gaming in a more analog style otherwise as far as phone specs go it is quite an old device by today's standards and it's definitely lagging behind there was a four inch 480 by 854 pixel resolution display. There's only a five megapixel camera on the back. You can see I've added some Sagru onto the back. So if you don't know what that is, be sure to check out our review on that also posted on this channel. Uh, and there's also only 512 megabytes of RAM in addition to a single core Snapdragon S2 processor clocked at one gigahertz. So, you know, for a lot of intensive gaming, it was critiqued because um, it wasn't you know the fastest processor such as dual core even when it was released in 2011. There's a 1500 milliamp hour capacity battery which is uh, decent and otherwise there was the standard kind of Wi-Fi, GPS, Bluetooth features you'll find in an Android phone. So it's an Xperia phone so there is a, a bit of a Sony skin on top of the device depending on the variant you have. So the one that I have here is the CDMA model that came with Verizon and you could have picked it up for 200 bucks with a two-year service agreement and there's also a, a GSM variant that uh, came with the AT&T here in the States. Um, otherwise uh, other notable kind of design features which you can take, take a close look um, is at the bottom here we have standard hotkeys for taking you back home to the menu to the search they're pretty tactile although um, kind of an interesting design decision by Sony at the time so place these keys pretty close to the bottom or the rim of the phone so it gives the illusion of having a larger display but the top here is a slightly larger than kind of the bottom. There's also a front-facing camera for use with a Skype as well as video chatting applications. The left-hand side featured a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, a micro uh, USB port for charging, took about two hours to completely charge, and the other side featured uh, volume controls and left and right shoulder keys for gaming which are also very tactile and responsive. Now the phone itself is made entirely out of plastic and at the time people were kind of complaining and saying you know there's no metal components it doesn't feel premium enough but um, I still think that it does feel pretty solid because it's a hefty phone with its side out uh, mechanism as well as battery so it feels substantial in the hand and because it's plastic it molds to the curves of your hands and you get a pretty good grip on all the controls as well as the shoulder keys when you actually need them. The back was slightly curved as with most uh, Sony phones at the time and there was that uh, 5 megapixel autofocus camera with LED flash and uh, underneath the back cover there was a micro SD card slot for expanding the memory. Quite important uh, because if you want to add more games, download apps, you really needed that since there was virtually no built-in uh, flash storage on here. So with the side out open, you can see here some of the unique things that Sony did with the controls was they use kind of capacitive buttons here for really the joystick placement, which uh, makes possible uh, a, a more slimmer kind of form factor so you can slide the, the phone's display back and forth without taking up much bulk. Um, and it works well enough. It's pretty sensitive. It's not as great as a real analog kind of joystick, but at least you have dedicated controls for the arrow keys and kind of the standard square, triangle, circle, and X keys on the sides, which are encased uh, in metal underneath so they're again very tactile and responsive. There's also dedicated controls for going to the menu to select and start when you are accessing your games. So if I want to take a quick look at uh, the UI here, it's uh, been quite a while since I've revisited a phone that actually has a stock uh, Android version 2.3 and that's what that's what the uh, phone originally shipped with. Since then, there have been a few updates. You could have updated it to Android version 4.0, and of course, you can always root it and uh, do your bit, your own tweaking and update it further, but um, basically 2.3 was what it came with out of the box, and that's the experience that you see in front of you now. So obviously, things like the App Store, the Marketplace, and not the Play Store are severely outdated, uh, but you can see how this is what the phone originally looks like when you first picked it up. Um, interestingly, there were a few games that were preloaded because, again, this was meant as kind of a smartphone uh, portable gaming console hybrid. And some of the you know preloaded pre games included Asphalt 6. There was Bruce Lee Dragon, Crash, uh, Crash Bandicoot, which was kind of a 
a game that was ported from PlayStation 1, and it works very well. And there's also a few other titles um, here and there, and of course you could download more. At the time, you had to pay roughly $6 to get a kind of authentic game that was uh, pre-assigned and uh, defined for the Xperia Play's controls, which was a little bit on the hefty side of the spectrum, and the selection of apps was very minimal and the selection of games. So that's one of the reasons why the Xperia Play didn't sell too well, and uh, ultimately you know, wasn't as popular of a phone as Sony would have hoped. Um, and because of that, we really didn't see too much popularity in terms of game and app development down the road. Otherwise, uh, what's also unique about kind of Xperia phones in general, and something I learned just the other day, is that it's basically more or less impossible to brick a Sony Xperia phone. There are tons of uh, free apps online, um, you know, even Sony's own software allows you to flash various firmwares and always recover your phone, so uh, there seems to be kind of a safeguard against that. Uh, there's a ton of support at least, so this is one of the better phones if you do plan on kind of picking it up and for the first time and be experimenting with the software, so that's something to quickly point out. Anyways, we have the classic drag down notification drawer on the very top there. You have access to some quick notifications, including your battery status, as well as the wireless options. And this was the original home screen that you see, you see here as well, kind of purple, customized by Verizon. There's also live wallpapers that you could you know, kind of go through. So if we take a quick look here, you can see some of these options. And uh, some of them are stock from Android 2.3, but uh, some have been tweaked and added by, by uh, Sony, such as some of uh, these that you see in front of you now. So we go back and uh, take a quick look at the dialer here and briefly discuss the call quality for both the AT&T and Verizon variants of the Xperia Play. Call quality was excellent and the phone does have haptic feedback so when you tap on a key it vibrates slightly just to give you the simulation of actually pressing a real button. It also comes into play when you're when you're gaming with the phone. Um, and call quality here is excellent because the microphone here is clean, it's crisp, the uh, actual speaker here which you can't really tell, there are no speaker grills visible, but it does get very very loud and it creates a pretty immersive experience when you're calling as well as when you're playing back games and watching videos. Um, so that was something that was nice at the time. Battery life lasted around, I would say, two days before you need to give it a recharge, um, depending on how much you gamed on it, of course. Since it had a smaller display than, let's say, a modern day smartphone, it's going to last you for a bit longer. So here is uh, next to the Passion 660, which is a 5-inch phone, so you kind of see that size difference. Otherwise, some other applications on here, there's not too much to write home about. Uh, Sony did a pretty good job with keeping things uh, kind of minimal here, at least in the Verizon version that you see in front of you. There are a few Verizon-specific apps, but uh, all in all, there's just a typical clock app, there's the camera app, um, kind of some Google services like navigation for turn-by-turn -turn directions um, for you know places, Mobile Skype was on here, um, the Xperia Play Store, and that's it. There's a YouTube client and uh, some other, there's also an Office Suite, so it does allow you to very quickly edit as well as view Word, Excel, and PowerPoint documents if you want to quickly edit those. So if we want to take a quick look at the keyboard here, um, it brings up a virtual keyboard, of course. And what's kind of nice about this keyboard is it comes preloaded with Skype, so uh, with, with swipe. So if you kind of draw around, you can see that it is pretty continuous and responsive as far as touch sensitivity goes. And it's going to automatically try to predict your words um, and kind of learn your, your typing patterns. Um, it's pretty decent as far as the typing by kind of typing by feel as well as kind of rapidly typing out uh, maybe text messages or some Word documents, for instance, but obviously it isn't a messaging phone um, since it doesn't have a QWERTY keyboard, for instance, that slides out. So again, if you slide out the gaming controls here, it does automatically open up the Xperia Play uh, kind of app with the corresponding games that you could you could select through. So that's kind of a nice feature that has been pre-assigned. And uh, obviously, you could always install, let's say, your own um, emulators on here and maybe play back some Game Boy games, uh, DS games, so on and so forth. And those things are certainly possible. Lots of people do it, although you just have to take a little bit of extra time to reassign the controls uh, to correspond to what you want to do with those third-party applications. So finally, if we just take a quick look at, I guess, the uh, camera here. Um, it's nothing too, you know, exceptional. It's a 5 megapixel camera. It does require you to have an SD card inserted, but the overall kind of UI here you can see is very stock Android. You can tweak things such as, you know, the autofocus, you can change the exposure, you can have auto tagging um, turn on or off. There's also, you know, white balance, and you can, of course, toggle back and forth between the front and uh, rear facing cameras. So those things are all possible and uh, work pretty well. You can record video up to 720p HD resolution, and it's a decent camera. Uh, Sony does make decent cameras in general, so this 
one really isn't an exception, despite the relatively low megapixel count here in 2016. As far as uh, web browsing goes, you know, by today's standards, it is very outdated, but there was a WebKit-based browser, so you could, you know, view back some pretty complex pages and pinch to zoom in and out uh, using maybe Wi-Fi. It's going to increase your speed. Uh, but th then again, here in 2016, it's still going to take a few seconds uh, longer to fully load a page. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching this uh, retro video look back and kind of retro review of the Sony Ericsson Xperia Play, a very memorable and unique smartphone even here in 2016, just because it was kind of the first hybrid between being a smartphone running on Android and also being kind of a gaming console or a portable gaming console at that. So thanks for watching, and we certainly hope that uh, Sony decides to revive this concept, and uh, in the coming future, they release a more powerful and updated version of the Xperia Play for fans out there. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. This has been the Sony Ericsson Xperia Play.